My name is Christine, and this is my presentation on the physiological mechanisms that cause cyanide to be toxic to humans. Cyanide. There are many different types of cyanide, such as potassium cyanide, hydrogen cyanide, sodium cyanide, and many, many more. But what is cyanide? Cyanide is a chemical compound which contains the following cyanide group. It is an anion most commonly labeled CN-. And most importantly, it is toxic. So what are the mechanisms of its toxicity? Oh, I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce myself. Hello, I am Dr. Chemistry. And in order to explain the physiological mechanism of cyanide, I must first introduce you to a type of enzyme. And that enzyme is cytochrome C oxidase, or cytochrome AA3. This enzyme is in the fourth complex of the electron transport chain. These chains aid cells in aerobically producing ATP for energy. Cytochrome AA3 is found in the membrane of the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells. But what does this have to do with cyanide, you ask? Well, the cytochrome AA3 is a main target for cyanide in the human body. The cyanide ion binds to the ferric ions of the enzyme, then destroying its structural integrity, which prevents tissues from using oxygen, therefore impairing the cell function. This reduction in oxygen flow results in tissue damage throughout the body, affecting the most vulnerable tissue that rely on aerobatic respiration, such as the central nervous system and the heart. The central nervous system is probably the organism which is most affected by cyanide. This is because of the high demand of oxygen in neurons and the system's control of the respiratory system. The adverse effects of cyanide are on both cellular and physiological levels. Also inhibited by cyanide includes catalase, peroxidase, tyrosinase, azorbic acid, and many, many more. And something else I will just be discussing with you is detoxifying enzymes. For one is rhodonase. Rhodonase is a mitochondrial enzyme which detoxifies cyanide in the body. It converts cyanide into thiocyanate in a two-step reaction. And I will now explain this reaction to you. First, you start off with 15-247. What this is, is a non-essential amino acid which is biosynthesized by humans. The most important part of this is that it has a thiol side group. So this thiol side group reacts with thiol sulfate to create disulfide and sulfur trioxide. The disulfide then reacts with the cyanide to create the original thio group and thiocyanate, which is a much less toxic version of cyanide. Sadly, cyanide also creates deficiency in detoxifying enzymes, such as rhodonase. But not to worry, currently we are trying to create synthetic compounds to be used as an additional source of sulfur because it will facilitate the natural process carried out by rhodonase, which I explained earlier. Now comes the sad part. High inclination, oral, or germinal exposure levels result in certain clinical effects. These include convulsions, unconsciousness, and death. Low exposures will likely result in less severe symptoms such as headache or dizziness. However, if humans ingested cyanide at quantities of 10 milligrams or less per day, it would not be toxic. This is because at this amount, the compound is able to be transformed into the less toxic thiocyanate. Interestingly enough, studies have shown that continuous long-term consumption of nearly 5 milligrams per day of cyanide has no injurious effect on humans. Wow, all this explaining is giving me a headache. I need some Tylenol. Ah, uh, all but Now to my research. Wait, if that's a Tylenol bottle, that means... Oh, crap. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned plenty about cyanide, such as the fact that the mechanism of toxicity works not only at a chemical level, but a physiological one too. Just remember, 
if you do not want to end up like Dr. Chemistry, remember to properly label your pills.